prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, first of all, we want to give you all of the thanks, glory, and praise for the Wolfbeck meeting, for your mighty hand that rested upon us. The entire conference was grace given, grace given. And we acknowledge that with a voice of praise and gratitude to your name. We give you thanks for showing us mercy. And we ask that as we go into this series, you will cause us through your wisdom to benefit fully from that which you poured forth into our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen and amen. All right. So we want to do it, and I want to do it 30 minutes, and I'll be doing it every two days. I believe today is Thursday, so the next day we'll do this will be Saturday, and then we'll do that on Monday, and then we'll do that on Wednesday, and we'll see how it goes from that particular point. All right. One of the scriptures that I want to use is that the Bible says that about a slothful man. He says, the slothful man shall not roast that which he took in hunting. That's Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 27. The slothful man roasteth not that which he took in hunting, but the substance of the diligent is precious. All right. The lazy do not roast any game. That's they brought back game, but they didn't roast it. It says, but the diligent feed on the riches of the hunt. So here is speaking about the fact that the slaughter man went hunting. Okay? And he brought back game. He got an animal. But he did not feed on the riches, which means he did not um, extract maximum value for that which he took. All right, from the hunt. So if you go out and you pray and you birth a conference like Wolfbeck and you have six days clearly of definite encounters with God, it is important that the maximum value within that conference, which goes beyond, I will see this, um, the six days there, that, uh, that it's, be you maximize it or you extract all of the value that is contained within that conference now what happens after the conference to be honest with you is what determines the lasting impact that that conference will have all right on the lives of people what people actually do i mean just like after the ministry of jesus christ he did all of that and the and the disciples did not gather together in the upper room and tarry until they were endued with power from on high and they stay in the place of prayer essentially they would have lost um the very essence of what christ came to do um even though he said the work was finished he had had a very powerful ministry but the real essence of his work was now began to get began to extract the essence of his work after he left all right the scene now in first corinthians chapter 10 i want us to read the scripture it says for i do not want you to be ignorant of the fact he says i don't want you to be ignorant of this fact somewhere else i think in, in chapter 14 it says concerning spiritual gifts brethren i will not want you to be ignorant that word spiritual gifts the gifts is in italics so he says, concerning the spiritual, I won't want you to be ignorant. So he was talking about concerning spiritual things. I don't want you to be ignorant concerning that. He said, brothers and sisters, for our ancestors or our fathers were all under the cloud. They all passed through the sea. They were all baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. They all ate. He didn't say natural food, spiritual food. They drank the same spiritual drink. So they were all baptized into Moses. They were all under the cloud. They ate spiritual meat. They drank spiritual drink. For they drank from the spiritual rock that accompanied them. And that rock was Christ. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them. 
their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. That there's a people that had definite encounters with God that ate spiritual meat, that drank, all right, spiritual drink, and they drank from the rock who was Christ. But after the Bible says God was not pleased with many of them, or most of them. Another scripture tells us that the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that had it. So it is important that after you have such a feast and spiritual encounters, there is a follow-up. Um, the word was sown and planted into people. And the Bible says somewhere, those who brought forth 30, 60, and 100 fold, brought it forth with patience. That word could mean with consistency, they brought it forth. He says, another translation, another of the gospel says, he keepeth the word. He kept it. Which means that they kept that particular word. They held tightly onto it. And then they brought forth 30, 60, and 100 fold. So what do I want to share here? It is of utmost importance. Please hear what I want to say here. That after a spiritual conference of that nature, you go into a fast. That is the laid down scriptural practice that you call a fast. And the purpose of the fast we're going to see here is for a conversion within your heart. You know, Jesus, after he was baptized with the Holy Spirit, the first thing that happened was that he went into a fast for 40 days. And the purpose there was a conversion, which means within the fast, there was an integration into his being that which he received through the baptism of John. Had Jesus not fasted, hear what I'm about to say. Jesus, it would have been impossible for Jesus to have completed the work within the space of three years as stipulated in scripture or for him to even have known what he was really supposed to do. Let me share this here. When God called the children of Israel out of Egypt, he took them into the wilderness. They were to be in that wilderness for 40 days. They spent 40 years in the wilderness. The 40 days they were to be in the wilderness so are supposed to be days of fasting. That's what happened. The nation of Israel refused to enter into that fast and demanded that they eat the type of food that they ate when they were in Egypt. And the Bible says while it was yet in their mouth, there was leanness into their soul and they got into the judgment of God. In other words, that 40 days became 40 years. The 40 days were supposed to be 40 days of consecration and a fast. And we'll see this. And because they did it, they got themselves into this 40 years of wandering. Where wandering is going about without any clear direction for your life no sense of purpose or direction. Now, in Deuteronomy chapter 8, God showed them why he took them into the wilderness. In Deuteronomy, all right, chapter 8, sorry. Deuteronomy chapter 8. I want to show this here. 
Remember how the Lord, verse 2, led you the way in the wilderness these 40 years to humble you to test in order to know what was your heart, whether you will keep his commandments. He humbled you, causing you to hunger and feeding you with manna, which neither you nor your ancestors knew, to teach you that man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. The wilderness was supposed to be a 40-day fast, and it was in this fast period here that every single thing about Egypt was going to be dismantled in the system, and there will have been a reconstruction of the beings of the Israelites, making them fit through feeding continuously on manna to enter. That's why I said if Jesus didn't go on that 40-day fast, there would have been serious problems there. So let's look at why God wasn't pleased with them. If we look at 1 Kings, and I want to look at this here, what you're supposed to do in chapter 18, all right, and verse uh, 42, um, in 1 Kings 18 and 42. Now, Ahab, sorry, Elijah came out and said he, he has heard the Verse 41, he, Elijah said unto him, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of the abundance of rain. All right? Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of the abundance of rain. Now, Elijah told Ahab, to go and eat and drink while he didn't go and eat and drink. And we find out that the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, look at what happened here, verse 6. Now these things were examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they lost it. Neither be idolaters as some of them were, as it is written. The people sat down to eat and drink. And then they rose up to play. Now, in 1 Kings chapter 18 there, he says, Elijah went to the top of the camel after he told Ahab to go and eat and drink. And he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face in between his knees. Now, before we get into this, you must remember what, um, what God said. He said, I fed you with manna that you might understand that man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So it was that 40 days. Now, in Job chapter 23 and verse 12, he says, I have cherished thy words more than my necessary food. So we can say essentially during a fast, what God is compelling us to do is to understand that man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, or to feed, as it were, on his words. Now, so Elijah said to Ahab, I'll get to this, get the up for there's a sound of the abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to drink, eat and drink. And Elijah went up to the top of Carmel and cast himself down upon the earth. But his face was between his knees. So he heard a sound of abundance. And people can hear a sound of things. Let's say during Wolfbeck, and I heard a sound and it was very powerful and you know uh, this there was a very very powerful all right meeting and that you know you talk about it and you are amazed at the power of god that was in operation during the meeting now uh let me just show something here about jesus attitude here in terms of continuity 
he said um, in Luke here, what happened was in verse Luke chapter 9, verse 43, they were all amazed at the power of God when they saw in Jesus' ministry. But while they wondered, everyone at the things which Jesus did, he said to his disciples, so everyone there was in amazement at the power of God that was in operation. But Jesus turned to his disciples in the midst of that and said, let these sayings sink down into your ears. In other words, they had heard the saints. Just said, that's the most important thing that I'm doing. The words that I have spoken, let them sink into your ears. They had heard them, but it says they must sink into your ears. I'm coming back to the prayer there. Let them sink, let, which means they, let them get that depth. Let them go deep on the inside of you. So, man, we could look at what Beck and say, well, we have wonder and amazement. Look at what God has done. But the, he turned to his disciples and said, look, the essence of this thing is that the words that I'm, the, these saints must sink into your ears. Or else, all right, everything will be taken away from you. So, Elijah went and put his head in between his face after I had heard the sound, and began to travel. And in the traveling prayer, he told his servant, go up and go and check to see if there's any sign. He went the first time, he went the second time, he went the third time, fourth time. On the seventh time, he saw a hand. And Elijah now got up after that hand came out. All right, behold, there's little cloud out of it, like a man's hand, and said, go up to Ahab, prepare the chariots, get it down, that the rain stop thee not. So he moved from the sound to the hand. And it was the hand that brought about the performance, all right, of all of those things. Now, why were they overthrown in the wilderness? They saw the power of God. The Israelites, they saw God's power. They saw miracles. They saw signs and wonders. But they didn't learn the lesson that man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And feed upon the word of God for those 40 days for complete transformation. So we want to go, we're going on a 40-day fast. And essentially, all right, what I want, what we're saying here, is that people going to that fast, taking all, you know, Jesus, let me share this here. When he was living, they lay hands on his disciples and say, I'm imparting to you grace for this ministry and laid hands on all of them one by one. He didn't do that. Okay? In fact, what he told them was that they should tarry until they are endued with power from on high after the Holy Ghost has come upon them. He didn't lay hands on them. But he said something to God. He said, the words that you have given me, have I given them? You see, the secret there is the words. The transference is found in the lemas. He said, you give me, I have given them. The commandments you give me, I have given them. The instructions you give me, I have given them. And that's where they were, that's where they received those things in. So it's about, you can do all the stuff, but you have to take the words in. And Take this challenge here of the fast that we're going in here for 40 days. You know, God told them, he said, for every day of those 40 days, we'll add a year to it, 40 years. 
Interestingly, I can tell you that on a 40-day fast, you can pray out things in the realm of the spirit that will last for 40 years. You know, I was telling somebody who was on campus, you know, it was in fellowship, we in fellowship together, and I said to the person, I said, look, you know, this work that we're doing was an offshoot of a program we used to do on campus, and we called it the BBC, the Believe by the Believers Bible Conference or something, convention, called it BBC, Believers Bible Convention, I think. And before this thing started, we'll go out, you know, can we just be praying in sports center? And I said, was it that when we were praying at that particular point in time, while we were on campus, we were praying with back to, that that thing we just started as a fellowship which we eventually evolved into Wolfbeck. The second one we used to do was a program for professionals which evolved into platform. Was it that it was then that we were praying for years ahead? Because the 40 days there resulted into 40 years of wandering. And 40 years of wandering means without, wandering means without any clear purpose or direction. So during the fast year, you want to come out of this fast with clear purpose and direction through feeding, starting with, on the words. It's free download and I'll show you. You gather all the material. You take your notes, you get the messages and one by one during the fast you are praying and the sound you have heard here will be converted into the hand of God and you're going to see something which means you see something that as you act upon that particular thing and like he got up after it and said look prepare the chariots let, let me show you something about this hand here. The hand of God is such a powerful thing. In Ezra chapter 7 verse 6, Ezra went up from Babylon and was a ready scribe in the law of Moses which the Lord God of Israel had given. And the king granted unto him all his request. Ezra will go to the king and the king will grant unto him all of his request according to the hand of the Lord. God that was upon him. Because the hand of God was upon him, when he went to the king and asked for something, the king granted his request. There was the hand of God that was upon him. Look at it again in verse 28. He hath extended mercy unto me before the king and his counselors, and before all the king's mighty princes. I was strengthened as the hand of of the Lord my God was upon me, and I gathered together out of Israel chief men to go with me. So strong people because of the hand of God that was upon him. The Bible says many seek the king's favor, but every man's judgment comes from God. When the hand of God rests upon a person, it goes from just hearing the sound there to having that hand rest upon that person. Stuff happens. Look again. In Ezra 8 verse 18, and by the good hand of our God upon us, they brought us a man of understanding of the sons of Mali and the son of Levi, the son of Israel, and Sheribah with his sons and brethren. 18, they brought, because the hand of God, just like a person in business, they, because the hand of God, the staff that came in were solid people. He says, and by the good hand, of God upon us, they brought us a man of understanding. Quality people because of the hand of God that was on him. I'm just giving examples from the chapter about when God's hand is on a person. Every request he made to the king was granted. Everybody in authority, all right, extended mercy unto him before the king and his counselors before all the king's mighty princes. Doors were opening because of that hand. Now, how did he get that hand on him? 
He says in Ezra chapter 8, verse 25, I was ashamed to require of the king a band of soldiers and horsemen to help us against the enemy in the way, because we had spoken unto the king, saying, The hand of our God is upon all them that do for good that seek him, and his power and his wrath is against them that forsake. So they couldn't go to the king to request because they had boasted to the king about the hand of God that was upon them. Now, even though the king was showing them favor all of that, they, they, they said, look, we, they weren't depending on the, it wasn't based on the fact that they were going to meet the king. And, no, they knew it was the hand of God compelling those things. So they were ashamed. So how did they get that hand? He says, we were ashamed to require of the king a band of soldiers and horsemen to help us against the enemy in the way. He said, so we fasted. So the way they went about it was to call it fast. In other words, to get God's hand, we fasted and besought our God for this, and he was entreated of us. Now, what were they fasting about? Verse 21, then I proclaimed the fast there at the river of Ahava, that we might afflict ourselves for our God, to seek him a right way for us, and for our little ones, and for all our substance. That's material things. Children, family, says the right way. Now, if you don't go, you know, the Bible says, the neighbor of the foolish man wearieth all of them, for they know not how to enter into the city. You know, the people whose eyes were closed by the angel in Sodom and Gomorrah, the Bible says, even though they were at the door, they wandered around. All that wandering is a result of blindness. Now, you heard a sound, but you don't, there's, the purpose of it is not clearly defined. Look, look. Say this, you can catch an abundance of fish even and not have purpose. Not know that you are actually being called to catch men. And so you, you, you even without purpose, okay, there's no direction. It, it, it's, my purpose is not clear. Direction is not clear. In a fast, you can secure purpose for 40 years, which means for the next 40 years of my life, if Jesus tarries, this, I've seen what I'm supposed to do on the earth. I've received direction. I've received the right way in which we should go. And it came out of the words that were spoken during Wolfbeck and other things that God told me, all right, in the last few months where he was emphasizing. So you want to go into it. And the essence is to have the dawning of the day, to have clarity of purpose in what you're doing. Uh, to see clearly which, whichever thing you are doing with your hands, to, or whatever you're involved in, to be clear there. To, to pray until you see, because the Bible says, I have now seen the hand of God. You see it. And so, all right, we can now move. And after that, there was speed that actually came. He overtook everybody because he said, you could see in Jesus that after the 40 days of fasting, there was speed, all right, that came. And so, I want to close this teaching here today about it. That, look, we're going into a 40-day fast. Download all the messages. Okay? You want stuff to sink into your heart. The things that God, the sound you've been hearing. Enter into the place of prayer. That God give me eyes that see and ears that hear. Let me see and let me hear clearly. And I'm telling you that as you begin and to feed, the whole purpose is I'm praying, all right, that I feed on manna. I mean, we taught this. The shoe bread is in the outer court. The manna is in the inner court. You press in in prayer. I think it was Dr. Gwen, he said something about Kenneth Copeland and, and Jerry Savile when Copeland invited him to see how he prays. And even in the prophecy I played, he will say, Copeland said it in there. He says, God wants to teach you so you learn how to do it. Anything God tells you to do, he wants to teach you how to do it. And the frustration is that people are not taught 
by God how to accomplish projects that he gives to them. As Dick Paul said, to will is present, how to perform, I find not. And it's during this first day, that's, and people just begin to wander around. Is to, is to, and it's, you can only get, that's why Jesus said, this one cometh not except by prayer and fasting. See, somebody asked me, wow, so why 40 day fast? Look, there are three major characters in the Bible. Moses, you know when Jesus went to the Mount of Transfiguration, two people appeared with him. Moses, Elijah, and Jesus are there. Three of them. They are the three individuals in scripture that did a 40 day fast. Moses did it. Elijah did it. Jesus did it. Moses went to collect instructions. Jesus fed on the Israel Jews refused to do it. And to just feed on God's word. And said, look, we can't, we can't, we can't take this. We want to have our flesh back. And so it's a time where you want to just spend time praying and purposefully get in the messages into your ears. And start listening to them on a concentrated fast. And you will begin to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to you. I mean, the power that you felt, that people felt, that people said, look, we are speechless. And I'm not talking about just people, I'm talking about all over the world. People sensed very strong power. I mean, I have people tell me today that I'm not, I am going to be at Wolfpack 2025. I'll be there physically in that building because we sensed something that was really powerful. That power has to be internalized within and is contained in the words that were spoken. Because when you start speaking words, power is released. So you sit down here and begin to listen during this time here, praying and then feeding, looking at the scriptures again. And you'll find nuggets dropping on the inside of you. And I'm telling you, if Jesus tarries, what you will feed on during these 40 days, you'll be making use of it in the next 40 years of your life. Those stuff will still be playing out within your life. All right, we'll stop here. We'll continue on Saturday here. So we've given some direction concerning this, all right? Um... All right, uh, the 40 days fast, taking God's word into it. Uh, sorry, taking yourself into a place of prayer here. Not just to rise after you eat and switch or drink. They played, they were destroyed and overthrown in the wilderness. You want these things to sink into your ears and to get down into your being. All God wanted the nation of Israel to do was start 40 days. But he said, look, Look, that's why it says, it says, they lost death in Psalm 78. You'll see where their problem came, what the real issues were. He says that. All right. He says, Man did, in verse 25, did eat angels' food. All right? Because he is with the power brought for the salvation. He in flesh. That's what they, they wanted that. As does feathered fowls. He let it fall in the midst of the camp, around about their inhabit habitation. So they did eat and were well filled. He gave them their own desires. They were not estranged from their lust. But while the meat was yet in their mouth, the wrath of God came upon them and slew the fattest of them all and smote down chosen men of Israel. So this is very serious stuff we are talking about here in terms of your destiny. 
okay and please i will upload this and from mix allowed ask them to extract it also and share it on the groups for people so that people that want not even listen to this or i know that will begin to get this into their own system because it's very essential very essential for a post work conference to roast what you took until very essential if, if jesus didn't tell them to tarry in prayer or what he did or what he taught them will have gone to waste until they endured with power jesus came out he came out he told them he said i said you won't fast he said when the bride when the bridegroom is gone he said in that day they will fast they fasted when they were there they were fasting in that that's how the spirit came in and the power of god came upon them all right and they were changed okay god bless you all we'll continue on saturday please the fast start on monday the 15th and i believe it i believe it's on until the 23rd i believe it's 23rd of february all right the nature of the fast is they giving direction as to how the fast will be so it's not prayer points that we're praying today god give us favor for this praying tomorrow no we're praying eyes that will see ears that will hear and we're feeding upon okay material that god has given eating it and feeding upon it and placing the words upon our lips letting them sink deep into our ears and you begin to hear things and you realize that actually actually when you get into this let me tell you this you realize that the real meat of the convention you will have lost it without that fast you see it when revelation begins to drop in your spirit when your eyes start getting open when you start having clarity as to this is what you should do here this is how you should go about it this is what you should do there and the hand of lord rests and you begin to see all right doors open you would know that i don't want to say that without the fast it could just have been i i would just have touched the surface okay this is what he says taste of the lord and see that it's good it's one thing to taste food is another thing to eat it and digest it and that becomes strength on the inside of you all right god bless you all